In this video I'm going to discuss my solar stats for the month of September. What a start to the month it was weather wise and it certainly showed in the solar generation. I also switched tariffs halfway through the month so I'll be taking a look at how that affected my car and battery charging strategy and as usual I'll be looking at the payback for the system and where we are with that so stay tuned. Hi everyone I'm Danny V Solar and if you find this useful it would be great if you could hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel and that helps me to reach a wider audience and hopefully help people who are looking to get solar and home battery installed. So what's been happening throughout September? Well on the 17th I asked Octopus to switch me away from their flux tariff which had been great for me over spring and summer across to their intelligent Octopus tariff instead. Now the days are getting shorter and with the recent change from 4.1 pence per kilowatt hour exported to 15 pence per kilowatt hour exported on Intelligent Octopus, as the weather got worse, it made a lot of sense for me to switch over. Generally, the switch to Intelligent Octopus was very smooth and the test charge that you need to do when you sign up to the tariff worked perfectly well. The only slight struggle I did have was that Octopus needed to remove me off the Flux export tariff before they could fully sign me up to the Intelligent Octopus tariff. And they did miss this early on, but a quick message to them and it was quickly resolved and I was switched within around 24 hours from making the request. With the recent increase in the export rate, it now means that I can fill my car battery, my home battery, and hopefully shift as much of my house usage to the cheaper minimum period of six hours at seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour overnight. And it then means I can export any solar generation that I don't use during the day at 15 pence per kilowatt hour. And that'll help to offset any of the costs that I incur for importing the electricity overnight, which is great. If you're interested in moving to Octopus Energy for your energy supplies, it'd be great if you could use my referral code, which is on screen now. If you sign up to this, you will get 50 pound and I also get 50 pound in my account as well. Thank you to everyone that signed up to this so far. It really does help me. As a very quick reminder of my system, in December 2022, I had a 6.32 kilowatt peak solar array installed along with a 9.5 kilowatt hour Give Energy Gen 2 battery and a Give Energy Gen 1 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter. This is an east-west array with six panels on the east roof and 10 panels on the west facing roof. So slightly tricky to consolidate all my figures for this month with the change in tariff midway through the month. But I've tried my best to consolidate as best I can but if you do spot any mistakes please let me know in the comments. I'd also be interested if you have solar panels how your solar generation fared this month and also whether you've considered switching tariffs as well. If we first look at the solar generation for the month the system generated 407.11 kilowatt hours for the month so not too bad and around about 140 kilowatt hours down from August figures. You can see the difference that the good weather early on in the month made to the generation and where it started to tail off around about the 10th of September once those sunny days ended. You can also see the change in my strategy a little from this chart when I switched to Intelligent Octopus on the 17th, 18th ish. On Flux, what I did was generally discharge some of the battery capacity back to the grid throughout the peak times between 4 and 7 pm generally more like 5.30 or 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. throughout September. However, on Intelligent Octopus, as there's no peak export times, as the rate's fixed at 15 pence per kilowatt hour export at all times throughout the day, I haven't been exporting that back to the grid. Technically, I could do this at the start of the off-peak window and then take advantage of the 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour difference in the import to export rate and make a bit extra money during the month. But as of yet, I haven't bothered. This could change as time goes on, but we'll see how it goes. Of that 407 kilowatt hour generation, 67 went into power in the home, 94 went into the battery for use later in the day, and 244 was exported back to the grid. So still quite a high export number this month, but crucially uh, the export number was lower than my overall home and EV consumption for the month, which as I mentioned in my previous videos was a bit of an indicator to inform me of a good time to switch away from Octopus Flux for the winter months. The best day of generation was unsurprisingly early on in the month on the 3rd of September where the system generated 26.31 kilowatt hours and the worst day was the 19th of September where we only generated a measly 3.64 kilowatt hours. If we look closer at the best day of the month we were still on flux at this point so the battery dropped to a low of 54% overnight. The sun rose around 6.30am 
and then the solar charged the battery to full by around about 11 a.m. The solar panels generated a maximum output of 3.3 kilowatts and then I discharged the battery from about 5.45 ish to 7 p.m. again to take advantage of the higher rate export and then the system stopped generating around about 8 p.m. If we look at the worst day this was quite different compared to the best day. The battery only got to a low of 64% from the day before. Solar generation only started at around about 7 a.m. and only generated a maximum output of less than one kilowatt all day. The generation had stopped by 7 p.m. so we only had a 12 hour solar day. Interestingly on these two days I was on two different tariffs so I thought it was worth sharing these two charts side by side to show the difference in how I use the battery on the two tariffs. As you can see on flux although I could have charged the battery during the cheap rate period on flux I rarely did this as for my area there was only a 0.9 pence per kilowatt hour difference between the off-peak import rate and the daily export rate. So I left it to the solar to charge up the battery during the day. I chose not to charge a battery from the grid at all over summer. You can see the export on flux later in the day as well at the peak export time period where the battery drops off. The second chart is from when I was on Intelligent Octopus and on this tariff it makes much more sense to charge the battery to full overnight with the 7.5 pence difference between the overnight import rate and the daily export rate of 15 pence per kilowatt hour. So this is what I did here. I can then export any solar generation during the day to help the grid and as you can see there's no discharge during the peak hours. Even despite the weather on this day you can see that the generation was just about enough to keep the battery at around 100% for most of the day. This next chart also shows the change in the way that I used the energy between the two tariffs. So this is my grid import for the month of September. Very little import early on in the month other than for my electric car which isn't included in these graphs and I'll come on to that later. After the switch to Intelligent Octopus as I mentioned it makes sense to charge a battery overnight so that's what I did. So that is the import you can see on the graph here and this totaled a relatively small total still of around about 40 kilowatt hours for the second half of the month. 10 to the home and 30 into the battery. If we look at home consumption and minus the EV usage off it totaled around about 150 kilowatt hours so a pretty good month again and as I mentioned before we're pretty frugal with our electricity usage and 150 kilowatt hours seems to be about the standard usage for the average month. You can see the red colours on this chart as well towards the second half of the month which shows the grid import for the battery. 67 kilowatt hours of that usage came from the solar and 72 is from the battery so house usage still supported mostly by the solar for most of the month. And as usual the My Energy app reads slightly different to the Give Energy app. So if we calculate the EV charging that's the 39 kilowatt hours that I imported to fill the battery and the small amount of usage for the house taken away from the 281 kilowatt hour usage here. So a total of 242 kilowatt hours for the month to power the EV. So when combining roughly half the month on the flux off peak time period and half on the intelligent octopus tariff that equates to around £30 for the month to fill my EV which is a big saving versus filling up my old diesel car and overall the Tesla is just a nicer car to drive as well so no complaints from me. On to grid export for the month and this was still pretty good at 280 kilowatt hours 244 kilowatt hours of that was directly sent to the grid and 36 kilowatt hours was when I exported my battery to the grid and even towards the end of the month there were still days when we exported around about 15-ish kilowatt hours back to the grid. Uh, next if we look at the payback figures it's getting a little messy now but we're up to uh, month 9 for the first year of having solar panels and as mentioned the home consumption is 150.94 kilowatt hours and we imported 39.26 kilowatt hours from the grid which equated to around about £3.14 in cost. The generation was 407.11 kilowatt hours and we exported 280.8 kilowatt hours and that export gave us around about £59.28 for the month. So still a good payback there with the export even in September. And if we work out the cost without solar that equates to £45.28 and the cost with solar is minus £56.14. 
and that equates to an overall saving for the month of September of around £101.42. If we add that to the cumulative savings for the rest of the year, we're up to £1,200 now. And that leaves a remaining payback of my system, which costs just a less than £11,000 at the time of £9,777. I always like to keep the car usage separate, but I've included this on the charts as well. So if we take that 241 kilowatt hours that we used in the car, the usage cost on flux would have been £42.34 and the cost on Intelligent Octopus would be £18.15. And Obviously the oil price and diesel price and petrol prices also went up this month. So the average cost at my local Shell garage where I used to fill up is £1.62 for the month of September. And that equates to, for the miles I did, £162 for the month. So a big saving of £119 if I was on flux all month and £143 if I was intelligent on intelligent octopus all month. So yeah, basically somewhere in the middle. Um, is how much I saved for this month, so around about £130. So if we add that saving onto the saving for the solar generation, that puts the cumulative savings, which I always like to keep separate because, as I mentioned in other videos, I would probably move to Intelligent Octopus Tariff if I had an EV but no solar and battery as well. Um, but I always like to see the figures and how they balance out. So cumulative savings of nearly £1,600 for the year which gives a remaining payback if we include that of 9,388. And if we look at our September 2023 bills, the electricity, obviously the standing charge, we can't get rid of, and that was 14 pounds and 58 pence for the month, and an energy bill charge of 33 pounds and 38 pence. So as mentioned, that equates to around 30 pounds to charge the EV and then the three pound import for the home and battery usage. Uh, the export is minus £59.28 and gas standing charge £8.16 for the month and not very much gas use again, only mainly using it to heat the water. Um, I don't think we had our heating on very much at all throughout September, so only £4.88. So a grand total to power the house, power the battery and power the EV of £1.72 for the month of September. So cannot complain at that. If we look at the total monthly solar generation, we've got quite a nice uh, kind of hill shape there now. So it's dropping off for the winter as expected. The September generation was in the middle somewhere between the March and April generation. So starting to decline now, um, but not bad for September, I wouldn't say. And as always, very similar chart to the previous one. I, I include the worst, best and average monthly generation on this. Uh, and you can see the all starting to go down for this month. So overall, in terms of payback, we are pretty much bang on line with where I expected to be for around about this time of the, the year. And we're looking at a payback of around about six to seven years as things stand. But as always, lots of things could change between now and then. One thing that can't be understated though, is the flexibility that a solar array and battery give you. As I'm out most of the day at work, having that power stored in the battery during the day and then using that at night and throughout the day and we have a lot of flexibility about how we use the energy that we generate along with the assistance from the great tariff from octopus as well whether that's when and how we charge the car how we power the home and how much we export as well all while doing the bit for the planet personally i think the graphs this month give a good idea of how different we can use the two tariffs from octopus and all of a sudden going into winter it's less about how much the solar generation is and more about how much of the usage we can push to the overnight six hour rate at seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour. That's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments what you think of the difference in the two tariffs and also what you're up to this month as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.